So hi, welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm here in Kansas City, Missouri. We're on Bellefontaine, and we decided to do a series of locations where Walt Disney spent his childhood. This home right here is 3028 Bellefontaine. It's where Walt Disney lived for several years. Disney family moved here from Marceline, Missouri after Elias Disney had a failure of his farm. And we're going to show you different locations, including the school that he attended, which is about two blocks away. It's Benton Elementary School. It's now an apartment complex. But the lady who lives here is on the porch. She's going to talk to us a little bit about Walt Disney and his time here. This is the house that Elias and Flora Disney purchased in the fall of 1914. It would be the childhood home of Walt Disney until about 1921. The house looks pretty much the same as does the garage behind it. Elias Disney built the garage behind it sometime in 1920. It was in that garage back there, you can barely see it through there, that uh, Walt produced the Newman Laughograms and later Little Red Riding Hood, which was a first independent Laughogram cartoon. So there was not a lot of laughter here in this house. And down the street was a boyhood friend named Walter Pfeiffer. And the home was a place, and we don't know exactly where he lived, but it was somewhere in this area. Walter's family was fun loving. They would play the piano. There was a lot of laughter. Walt uh, Disney called it the laughing place because he found uh, joy in that house. Unlike his house where it's all hard work, now I think these sidewalks are still the same sidewalks that Walt Disney used a long time ago. Somebody's name in that is not Pfeiffer. So I blew up this picture. This is a picture of Walt Disney and his friend Walter Pfeiffer, I think sometime around 1912, 1914. This is Walt dressed up like Abraham Lincoln and his friend dressed up like something else. Uh, Walt took his dad's derby hat and made some kind of cardboard addition to it to make the stovepipe hat. He learned the Gettysburg Address and then he went to Benton Elementary School where he recited the Gettysburg Address. The principal was so impressed by it that he took him to every classroom. But this picture is somewhere in this area. You can see that it was taken right on this sidewalk right here because the two houses that we see in the background and then these two or three houses on the side match up. The two houses in the background, as you can see, are way back there. Still the same houses, same two-story houses. So yeah, the famous Walt Disney playing Abraham Lincoln photo from 1912-1914 era shot right here on this sidewalk. Who would have ever thought that his obsession with Abraham Lincoln would translate to an attraction at Disneyland. If you've been to Disneyland, you know that there's the attraction of great moments with Mr. Lincoln. He had a lifelong fascination with Abraham Lincoln and it started when he was a grade school kid. How cool is that? Okay. All right, we're gonna go up to the porch here. This is an old house, huh? Mm -hmm. Really old. Matter of fact, Are you you... <laughs> this right here is where they got the, uh, it was in my backyard. Okay. That was shot in the backyard? Uh-huh. So this is a picture of Walt and his uh, sister, mother, his baby sister Ruth and uh -huh. his mother in the backyard of this house. And his mother's name is Flora. Flora, yeah, and Elias and said it was here. And my daughter's name is Flora. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you get a lot of people that come by here and look at the house? I just had some people from Omaha just come by <laughs> over the weekend and then a busload of people came the week before. When I tell you it's so many people that come by here. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't know, boy. Do you like talking to people who come by? Every day, even the little kids, they bring their kids here so I can talk to them. Okay, what's yes. your name? Roberta. Roberta. Yes. I'm Jeff. Okay, Jeff. I can remember that. And my son, Brett, he's a Disney nut. Brett? Yeah. Oh, I know a guy named Brett. When I flew here, 
<laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, we live in California, so we've been to Disneyland a number of times. Oh, really? I've oh, never yeah. been. Really? Yes. I have never, ever been. It's getting expensive. Oh, I know it is. Now, is all this original? Yeah. Uh, like the uh, siding and such? Yeah. Wow. All of that's original. Despite what Roberta told us, an early photo of the Disney home shows that there were no asphalt shingles used to cover the front of the home when the Disneys lived here. We theorized that the shingle-like material was either glued or nailed to the wooden lapboard siding that Walt was familiar with. Is that the original door? That's not the original door. Oh, it's either. not either? My grandma and them replaced all that. Okay. Because the original door had a, you know how the old timey doors like, like on a Leave it to Beaver, when you first walk in their back door, it has that big window. Yeah, see. And then it has the door part. That's what kind of door that was right there. The garage, I understand the back is one that the that, dad built. It's original. Except only thing back there that is an original is that long window. It okay. used to be a small window there. Okay. And I guess you didn't get this picture here. Oh yeah, I've seen that picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was inside. Do you know right. what room that was? That was, I think that was right there in the dining room. Okay. Yeah. And if you go on, um, it's a movie that they got out, Save It, Mr. Banks. Now, saving Mr. Banks shows some of the, some of the house, not all of it. Let's see here. I get past all these old pictures I got here. How long have you lived here? Oh, I was raised here. Really? Yeah, me and my sister and my cousins. My great, my grandma and my grandpa and them passed away. So I wind up moving from Houston, Texas back home. My grandma always said, well, them don't have enough money to buy the house. So, I live in the house. My uncles and them called me to come live in the house. Well, this house is what? How old do you think it is? Oh, it's, it's gotta be 110 years old. Yep. Now this is my grandma and my auntie on the, in the yard. So you can see exactly where he was standing at. You haven't found any old stuff that maybe Walt left behind, huh? Nah. <laughs> Have his old stove. Stove? Uh-huh, that he okay. used to um, warm. keep warm with. Yeah. Oh, is it upstairs? It's in the garage. Oh, really? Yes. We don't keep that in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I also got a picture with the two nephews. Walt's uh, nephews. Okay. Yeah. I also got a picture with them. Did, did they stop by? Oh, uh, we took a... <laughs> yeah, they stopped by several times. No, not Roy. Not Roy. It's Charles. Okay. Charles Ellis. Okay. Walt's real name is Ellis. Elias. Elias, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, say Ellis, but Elias. I see you have a lot of Disney stuff on the ground. Oh, and I'm about to get more. Because ah. my chairs up here on the front porch are going to be different. The swing is going to be different. So what year did you actually move here? Uh, I moved back here in 2009. Okay. down the alley. Walking down the alley behind the Walt Disney house. And uh, it was the actual garage that Walt's dad built in 1920. And here it is. It said that Walt Disney brought to... Okay, so let me explain something about this. Um, Elias and Flora Disney moved out of here right after Walt finished high school and the boys could not wait to get out of here. So um, Walt immediately started going to work. He worked for the Kansas City Slide Company. He started producing slides for movie houses. They would uh, actually advertise businesses and Walt was basically a graphic artist and uh, A.W. A.V. Kager, who was the owner, was starting to experiment with uh, moving pictures. Basically, it was the beginning of cartoons. And he allowed Walt to bring a camera to this building right here. And this is where Walt um, first started experimenting with moving pictures. 
animation, if you will. And uh, this is a really old garage. It looks like it's made out of cinder block. I'm not sure if that garage door is original. But you can tell this is supposed to look like brick. It's actually asphalt. That's like asphalt shingle material. And here's the blocks. Not sure if this was added on. It looks like maybe it was added on. But this is the back of Walt Disney's house. How many others have given you of that view? So Roberta didn't invite us to see the inside of her house, which is totally understandable, but the glimpse of the backyard here is pretty cool too. Uh, she told us that the stairs on the side were not here when Walt was here. They were added when they rented out the upper floor of the house. Now Elias in Florida left here in 1917. They went to Chicago. He had dreams of pursuing a career with this jelly factory that later failed. But they continued to rent the house to Walt and Brother Roy. Now, in 1918, of course, World War I was raging, and Walt left here to go to France to drive an ambulance. And a year later, he returned to his parents, who were in Chicago at that time. Then later, he took the train to Kansas City to stay in this house, which was then occupied by two brothers, Roy and Brother Herbert, and his wife, Louise. And then at some point, when the Jelly Enterprise failed, Elias and Flora left Chicago for Kansas City, looked back in this house, and in 1921, they left for good. They went to Oregon and sold the house. Uh, Walt was without a place to live, so he went from boarding house to boarding house when he could afford it. Then he actually had to live in the office of the Laughagram Studios for a while. So he was living like a poor, starving artist for a while. And then Walt left Kansas City for good in July 1923 in search of a career in Los Angeles. Walt Disney, when he was a kid, he had to get up like at 3.30 in the morning and start bundling papers with his brother. They carried armloads of paper. I, I read somewhere that it was like 25 pounds, 25, 30 pounds of newspapers. And they had like 700 homes within this 20 block area to deliver papers. And uh, of course, you have a little boy that's getting up that early. When he gets to school, he's just totally exhausted and he's not very well focused in school. It's understandable. And it may have been that tiredness and his lack of interest in schoolwork that led to his interest in cartooning. And the world benefited from that. So the delivery of the newspapers would be made in front of the house and then the boys would have to get them ready for delivery. Elias demanded that his boys place the papers between the screen doors and the door frame. He didn't want them folded. He wanted them nice and crisp and without uh, any kind of blemish, so that the customers would be very pleased with the service. Elias did not let them keep their 250 a week. Uh, he considered that room and board for living here in this house. So yeah, he was, he was not a, a guy that would probably uh, enamor his kids for, with affection, but uh, nonetheless, they loved their mother. Elias is a very religious man. He uh, was very hard on his boys. He believed in hard work. He didn't believe in having any fun. That's just the way it was. And the boys wanted to have fun like all boys do. So I'm not gonna comment about the neighborhood, but I think we heard a series about three gunshots a couple blocks away. And now some sirens are going on. Yeah. So when Elias Disney moved his family here in 1911, in September 1911, Walter Disney had to start school here as a second grader, even though he had finished second grade in Marceline, Missouri, where they just moved from. He was here at Benton Elementary School. It was a K through eight school. He completed six years there, graduating in June of 1917. Now the principal of the school was James Cottingham. We have visited his grave. Imagine Walt Disney would have come to school from either that direction or that direction into the front of the school here. It's now actually a senior housing complex, but it opened in 1868 as a whites only school. And in 1953, it became an all black school. And it actually closed in 2002 as a school. It is now the DA Homes Senior Apartments. It was here that he and Ruth attended here, his little sister. Walt 
participated in the track team here, which was basically the only time he ever showed any athletic prowess. He would often get to school here pretty sleepy because he had just got, got up from the newspaper route. He was dog tired. Later in his life, he would remember his school days here and once wrote this to a former teacher, Daisy Beck, in 1940. I participated in several events and even won a medal one year on the championship relay team. Do you remember the time I brought the live mouse into the classroom and you smacked me on the cheek? Boy, what a wallop you had, but I loved you all the more for it. And I can still plainly see the kids marching single file into the classrooms to the rhythm of the piano in the hall. I remember how Principal Cunningham would break in on any class if he had a, any new story. Uh, and all the work would cease until he had his fun. He had his faults, but I think of him as a swell fellow. It's said that Principal Cottingham loved to pop in in his class to see how the teachers and students were learning. He popped in one day into Walt's class. They were studying a geography lesson. Walt had his geography book propped up, but behind it, he was drawing cartoons, and Cottingham came up to him and said, young man, you'll never amount to anything. I have to think that that put down was uh, Maybe an emphasis for Walt Disney to say, hey, I showed you, you know. Either that, apparently it didn't hurt his feelings too bad. This is the back of the uh, building, but you see up there, it still has a name of the school when it was black. Uh, I wonder if you took that plaque off, if it was, say, Benton Elementary School. But this is uh, one of the back doors to the former Benton Elementary School. Okay, so we're about two blocks away from the Disney home on Bella Fontaine, and this is the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church on East 30th Street. This is the closest church to the Disney home, but I have no idea if Elias Disney brought his family to worship here when they first arrived, but we do know that they regularly attended the Westminster Congregational Church, and that's at East 36 and Walnut Streets, or I should say it was Unfortunately, that church building was tore down because the roof was failing, and I guess it cost too much money to restore, so they completely wiped it away. It had a castle-like appearance, and it said that's what probably inspired Walt to be interested in castles. But undoubtedly, Walt walked by this church on his way to school and admired this church as well, which also has a kind of a castle-like appearance. And honestly, that bell tower kind of reminds me a bit of the John Marshall High School, just a block or two away from Walt's Lyric Avenue home in Los Angeles. Walt Disney probably would have come right down the sidewalk here to walk to school over there. So it was the summer of 1912, Walt and his friend decided to go into business. It would have been Walt Disney's first business. He decided to set up a soda stand right here on this corner. We're at 31st and Montgall. And their first business venture was a failure because they drank all the profits. Apparently they probably drank more than they sold. So you can imagine Walt Disney's first business <laughs> taking place right here. I've come over here to take a look at the McConaughey Bowling. It's at the corner of 31st and Forest here in Kansas City. May 1922, this is where Walt Disney set up his Laughagram Studios and the second floor of the building behind me, which is well over 100 years old. Uh, a couple years ago, I think it was about three years ago, a car hit the front of this building and it took a major hit. And I think they're trying to reconstruct it, but I see that this building is in pretty bad shape. So what was created in here? Um, basically, him and his staff produced Laughagram series as well as Tommy Tucker's Tooth. It was a promotional consideration for a local dentist and was the song O Real Martha, a live action sing-along whose studio was just beginning production of the first Alice comedy, Alice's Wonderland in June of 1923, when a lack of money forced them from the building. They were just not paying the bills. So I have a picture of the car. It crashed right into the front of this building. But uh, it's no mistaking the fact that, look at that, Walt Disney, Kansas City, Laughagram Studio, this cradle of animation right here. 
1910 to 1923. Now on the ground floor here was a, I believe it was called the Forest Cafe. Walt basically set up shop up here. He also basically lived in the apartment and uh, he often would uh, take credit to get meals down here. In fact, uh, I think he kind of overdid the credit thing and they eventually denied him. He was a starving artist for sure. But somebody's adorned this building with a lot of uh, cartoon artwork. Check it out. This is some of the original uh, fixtures on the front of the building. Man, if these bricks could talk, huh, they would tell of about a young Walt Disney walking into the building here every day. This is one of the entrances. Looks like maybe the main entrance here. Inside of the Forest Cafe where Walt Disney had some meals when he was given the credits. 100 years ago, he was ousted from this building because he couldn't pay the rent. Everywhere around Walt Disney's McConaughey building are crumbling pieces of brick. But I am pretty sure these are original. It's been reported that there were so many mice in this area that they would grow into the building and they would run across Walt's desk, kept them as pets, and then he would actually feed them. He'd watch them, study their movements, and um, it's kind of there that he developed the concept for Mortimer Mouse, which was a cartoon character that he wanted to establish. And uh, when time came for him to vacate these premises, he emptied the mice out in a field. And I'm assuming it's this area behind us. Got to consider that back in the day, it was a lot more... Uh, a lot more rural than it is today. Walt well, Disney was so poor they said he had to go down to the Union Station once a week and take a bath. That's how he got his baths. So much history in here. I see part of the facade is falling off too up there. We're gonna go up a block and show you the location of where the Wortham building was. It's at the corner where the uh, second Laughogram Studios was located at 31st and Troost. I heard from another YouTuber that Walt Disney's office was actually on this side of the building, where that window is. So I'm standing across the street to kind of show you an overview here. Uh, so the Wortham Building, better known as Isis Theater, was built in 1917 by druggist Joseph Wortham. The iconic Isis Theater here opened in August of 1918. It was in operation until 1970. In 1922, three stories were added to the building, creating office spaces, one of which housed Walt Disney's Laughogram Studios for a short time. Due to the economic hardship, though, this area became blighted over the years. However, a few businesses continued to occupy buildings until its demolition in 1997. Got some public art there in its place. This was once the uh, ground central for the racial unrest that happened here in the 1960s and 70s. And uh, they, so they paid tribute to Walt Disney with, uh, and Isis Theater with the painting of this mural over here. As you can see, there is a picture of Walt Disney. I believe that's actually a picture of him standing at Disneyland. But uh, a gentleman just stopped and told us that the name of the street, Troost, and there's a push to change the name of it to Truth Street. Now, I'm assuming that Troost has something to do with slavery back in the day, but I'm not sure. And uh, you see some Indians up there. You see a 1940s car in front of a building. You see a pastor baptizing someone. So yeah, there's a lot of history right here on this street corner. 31st and Troost Street. Walt Disney was very familiar with this area. Looks like they're doing some rehabilitation across the street as well.
to get very confused because uh, we wanted to find this address at 3241 Troost and uh, it comes up kind of in this area. Whatever was here before is gone now. But in the early days when Walt Disney was setting up his cartoon business, he first listed his home address on uh, Bellefontaine and then he scratched out the business address and put 3241 Troost Street, Kansas City. And it comes up as right in here. I don't know if it was a commercial building or what the deal was. But yeah, it would have been right here where Walt Disney had one of his offices. When Elias Disney first brought his family to Kansas City in 1911, their train would have rolled into the first Union Station located in what is now called the West Bottoms. A major flood and lack of room for expansion caused the station to be replaced at a different location. Walt had a fascination with trains as a young boy into adulthood, so it's totally plausible that Walt modeled his Disneyland train station after the station that he first saw as a small boy in Kansas City. The current Union Station of Kansas City was constructed in 1914, and Walt Disney often would take the train here. In his days as a starving artist at Laffergram Studios, Walt would come down here once a week to use the public showers that were available. No doubt that he was awed by the grandeur and excitement of the Union Station as it bustled with thousands of people on a daily basis. The grand building is not very far from the Liberty Tower, which a young Walt Disney filmed during its construction. So I need to get something clear to everybody. You can't see this on TV, but I'm from California and it's hot. It's a dry heat. When you come to Kansas City, it's a very humid heat. I'm sure those of you who have visited here kind of know what I'm talking about. It's very muggy, especially today it's July. Right now I'm on Central Street in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm gonna show you the Kirk Building. It's where the Kansas City Slide Company was, where Walt Disney worked. The Kirk Building is right here. Walt probably had an office upstairs. Right across the street, 1905, fire department. I'm sure Walt heard the fire truck clanging out of here. Looks like it's been changed and closed up for the fire Engines used to be coming out of right there. In early 1920, Walt took a job as a cartoon artist with the Kansas City Slide Company inside of this building, which was the Kirk Building at 1015 Central. It was built in 1908, and Kansas City Slide was here from 1913 to 1920. Walt was paid $40 a week to work in here. The company was established by Arthur Vern Cogger, or A.V. Cogger, in 1910, and it originally produced hand-drawn glass slide advertisements and moved to moving pictures, basically uh, the first animation that there was in the country. In 1915, one of the animation techniques was called stop motion, in which a drawing of a character would be cut out and hinged together, photographed, and then moved in small increments for the next, giving the impression of movement Later, they moved to live action. Walt Disney worked for Cogger from January 1920 to May 1922. When he was hired, Disney basically lacked sophisticated drawmanship, but he was curious about animation. He got tips here on animation essentials from one of the cameramen, who was Jimmy Lowry, and started experimenting with the techniques. To make up for his shortcomings in technical skill, Walt would often apply humor to otherwise dull ads. He also enjoyed acting and occasionally stepped in for live film ads. And here we have a sign that says uh, 1015 Central was built in 1908, expanded in 1925. It was here in 1920 that Walt Disney was introduced to the basics of motion picture production and animation while working for the Kansas City Slide Company. So yeah, original building. Very cool architecture here in the Midwest. My son and I were just remarking about that earlier. So across the street from the Kirk Building where Walt Disney worked here in the early 1920s, I wanna thank you for getting to the end of this video. We hope that you liked and appreciated what we showed you about Walt Disney's early days here in Kansas City. You think about this young man 
his formative years were spent here. A lot of the stuff that he observed here in Kansas City, you will see reflected in Disneyland itself. Down 31st Street, there was a trolley. And if you think about Disneyland, he showed those horse-drawn trolleys being carried up and down Main Street. If you could give us a comment, we would appreciate it. Also, a thumbs up helps with the algorithm. Thanks so much for enjoying this episode of History Hunters. Mm -hmm.